One of the ways scientists study viruses is to examine their genetic makeup. We can take multiple viruses from an outbreak and we can compare slight differences in their genomes to work out their family tree. Upon doing this we can then map that family tree across the planet and we can examine how the virus behaves and we can determine chains of transmission. This information can be especially important when studying viruses that have increased virulence over time, such as the Enterovirus 71 that you can see on the screen at the moment. With the advent of very powerful supercomputers, we can take this genetic information and use it to create a three-dimensional model of the virus. Before we do this, we need to ensure that the model that we build is biologically accurate. For this purpose we've used poliovirus type 1 which has been very well researched with publications dating back a hundred years. Polio is a very simple virus to reconstruct consisting of a protein shell and the genomic information in the core. The structure follows a fairly simplistic icosahedral symmetry with 60 identical subunits, also known as protomers. What we can do is we can take one of these protomers that we've created from our genetic sequence and recreate 60 copies and position them using simple mathematics into a virus shell. We can then load that structure into a supercomputer and examine such things as antiviral drug behaviour within the virus. The advantage of having 60 copies of this particular protoma creating the virus shell is that we don't just have one point with which to gather measurements, but we actually have 60 independent drug binding sites all behaving in a more biologically relevant and statistically relevant way. Once we've run our simulation, we can then go in and examine not just one protoma, but we can take all 60 protomas and move them into the same space. This allows us to examine the virus and subtle differences that occur on different parts of the virus shell, particularly when an antiviral drug is bound to the virus. What we can then do is take a closer look at the drug, which is tightly bound to its position within the virus. What this enables us to do is to examine the 60 drug molecules that we've used and compare them to the X-ray crystal data that was originally calculated from in vitro experiments. We can take our 60 molecules and create a density map of those 60 molecules and then compare how well does that map match the original crystal data of the drug bound to the virus. By having 60 protomers gathered together in the same space, we can see where there's variations. These variations appear in X-ray crystallography data as a beta value. The crystal data is shown in colour, and where there is a significant deviation, it's displayed as either red or green. This correlates quite well with our molecular model and as you can see there are structures that were not resolved in the crystal structure that can be resolved once we take an average of the 60 protomers.
In order to replicate the biological environment of the virus as naturally as possible, we use a method that is similar in effect to a hall of mirrors. With this effect, any atom that leaves one side of the periodic cell will come back through on the opposite side of that cell. This is especially important for replicating large biological systems. We can see a single cell here with periodic reflections on either side. And as the simulation progresses, you can see a number of ions surrounding the virus and moving in between these periodic cells. Ionic movement is a very important thing to observe in viruses, particularly with poliovirus. So what we can actually do is observe the behaviour of a single sodium ion. In particular, the ion that is shown in the bottom right hand side. This ion actually traverses the capsid, or the shell of the virus, on the twofold axis of symmetry. This axis is thought to be quite important in the process known as virus breathing. Once we've built models, we can then start doing things with them. In this particular instance, we can actually take a virus model and add an antiviral drug. You can see the antiviral drug on the outside of the virus making contact with the surface. The target of this particular drug resides underneath the star and is a little lipid or fatty acid. And what we would like to see is the drug making contact with this site, displacing the lipid and nestling inside the fivefold axis of symmetry of the virus. One of the advantages of having 60 protomers within the shell is that we can take all 60 of these protomers, place them back into the same space, and then look at where the drug occupied or spent most of its time on the surface. In this instance, you can see that just above the drug target, the antiviral drug spent quite a bit of time, enough to actually create a density. Once we are happy with these modelling techniques, we can then apply them to viruses such as the Enterovirus 71 and be confident that these models are an accurate reflection of the actual virus in nature.